Ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher, the 1200 ladder, and we talk about why the Egyptian god cards are, sadly, booty, booty, butt cheeks, as we like to say on the channel. Now, what inspired this just like out of nowhere? Because I've talked about the god cards before. Uh, I want to say it was like several months ago now at this point where like I showed off a winged dragon of raw build that was teching in a small tier element package um, to help facilitate plays and be able to get you to the Egyptian god card. And uh, I saw an article on TCG Player just like maybe an hour ago, and I decided to copy the builds from it. I believe it's from Lucas Peterson. Like I'm not trying to hate on the guy. He writes very good articles for TCG Player. He had put out three Egyptian God card builds, and this isn't a knock on him, like I said. It's not like the builds are bad. The builds are decent to, like, as best as you can make a God card deck, right? But something that I've realized now with the God cards, which, I mean, I'm sure has been obvious for years, but it's like, with playing for now... 15 years competitively in this game and seeing all of the different meta decks that have come and gone and having decks like purely that offer so much flexibility in terms of what cards you can play whether it's hand traps board breakers what have you that is really what the god cards are missing in 2023 ladies and gentlemen like these decks are hot garbage now we're going to go through like all three god cards here so so try and bear with me the builds are whatever like you can copy these builds if you want i'm not going to do like a standard deck profile because like you can just go look at the tcg player infinite article and get the builds yourself but looking at decks like obelisk right and like obelisk when you look at the competitive landscape like obviously casual that they're, they're going to probably think all the god cards are great but when you're looking at being making a god card deck that is competitive as possible obelisk is seen to be the best one because you know it's got the standard when normal summon cards and effects can't be activated but then it says neither player can target this card with card effects which is pretty solid especially since we're in a format where most decks are playing six books so you're already cutting out three books in the process that being book of moon so you know they've only got book of eclipse to work with is that necessarily a great thing no that doesn't mean like the deck is suddenly amazing but when you look at the cards surrounding the god cards in general and like you're trying to build a deck around them the cards are just so terrible like guardian slime is the only other like level 10 water in the game to get to god slime like other than that you have to use metal reflect slime i don't know why konami never made a retrain of metal reflect slime to make it easier to get to to summon out the level 10 water to get to god slime because god slime is actually like a really solid monster like just generically like if there was a retrain of metal reflect slime to where i don't know if it was like a normal trap so you could trap trick it out to like be able to play like i don't know one metal reflect slime and one god slime in your like let's say meta deck tier element cash tier or whatever to get to god slime would be really cool i mean it's a 3000 attack and defense wall like it's actually pretty solid but like even just getting to the god cards you have to play these really mediocre at best cards that come with these restrictions that just in 2023 make no sense like raw's disciple isn't even played in an egyptian god card deck it mostly well now saw past tense because they've gone to gimmick puppet but it was seen playing branded just because of the fact that it has the line of text of you cannot special summon monsters except by the effect of raw's disciple period like the fact that it got out two more is just irrelevant because uh, like even in a god card deck, like, why should you be locked out of special summoning except by Raw's Disciples effect when you play this card? You're inherently being punished for putting out two more monsters on the field while you're playing a god card deck. And I get that when this card came out years ago, you know, they didn't want this to be generically good. Like, back in the day of Exceeds, like, when Exceeds were the only type of extra summoning mechanic next to Synchros, could you imagine, like, if you went normal summon Raw's Disciple, get out two more level fours, and make a rank four Exceed that required two or three level four monsters? Like, that would be nuts. But then trying to throw in other cards to make the deck function, I get playing the actual, like, obelisk stamped support cards like fist of fate breaking ruin god soul crossing being like the really only disgusting card generically for god cards in general but like even stuff like the breaking ruin god and fist of fate like they're cool and they're flashy but they're not actually all that good mound of the bound creator being a field spell that came out years ago that back when it first came out was still pretty garbage like it, just in the obelisk build alone the only good cards in this deck are honestly soul crossing and maybe soul energy max 
But, like, you have to have an obelisk on the field for that. And if you have an obelisk up, you're probably winning the fucking ball game anyway. <laughs> or you're probably not because you're playing an Egyptian god card deck. And, like, I'm not saying that these decks need to be tier zero, but, like, can they at least be rogue? Like, Reactor Slime is garbage. Like, just looking at all of these cards, like, they make them so cool and so flashy, but why can't they make them at least competitively viable? Like, Fist of Fate sucks. Ruin God sucks. Like... The cards that should have had the stamp of uh, cards and effects, the activation of this card or its effects cannot be negated, nor can its effects be negated, they didn't stamp that on the best one, which is Soul Crossing. They could just go like, okay, cool, Baron negate, or, you know, just anything. Oh, you're attempting to summon a monster, I'm gonna just negate that with my summon negator. Like, this card can just be easily outed, and it just makes no sense to me. It's a more powerful Soul Exchange, or like a Monarch Stormforth. And even then, like, Soul Crossing is not all that good. Also, locking you into activating one card or effect per turn until the end of the next turn just makes no sense to me. Like, it being a quick play is pretty good, but, like, if you set it and the opponent pops it before they have out three monsters, then it's just dead. Card of the Soul is interesting. Being able to add any monster from deck to hand whose sum of attack and defense equals your life points. So, like, being able to get straight to Obelisk is cool. But, like, the Winged Dragon of Ra has a name-stamped searcher. Like, why can't we have something that just adds Obelisk? Um, I also wanted to talk about here, if I can scroll all the way down to uh, Wing Dragon of Raw. Um, I don't know why we're playing the Dark Beckoning stuff. Like, it just doesn't seem all that good. I feel like Raw's Disciple would actually be better in this deck. But, like, I was looking through, like, the Wing Dragon of Raw stuff. And, like, the only real good cards in this deck is, like, these three Raw, I guess, because you're playing a Raw deck. Uh, this... And, like, maybe Phoenix. Oh, and Sphere Mode, because it's just good at cracking boards. So, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are literally, uh, even then, like, this is a stretch, because this card just kind of sucks. So, like, six, maybe if you really want to push it, seven cards that are good to at least decent in Raw. Whereas in, like, the other two God card decks, that being Obelisk and Slifer, the, like, besides like what the god cards themselves they really don't have anything that's all that good like blaze cannon's a disgusting card in the context of a raw deck other than that it's terrible because it's like you can't consistently enough get to it like the true sun god is basically a searcher for raw or a card that mentions it so like it can search any of your raw cards pretty much but if you can't get the sun god then like what are you doing and like when you look at these opening hands like Look at this, one, two, three, four, five. Even if you go second and you draw for turn, you have nothing to break the opponent's board. So they set up a board of just negates and interruptions and floodgates. Like your, your butthole is getting blown out of, the, uh, out of your local OTS store into like next month. Like this is horrible. And the reason why that I say it's just so mediocre and bad is because when you look at a deck, like purely, if I can scroll through like all my other trash decks here, uh, if I even have purely on here, uh, I guess not. So let's just use Sky Striker as an example. Sky Striker, you know, they're a type of deck where they have to play their Sky Striker spells and things, but there's also a lot of flex spots, and purely is very similar in that regard, which I'm, I'm actually really surprised I don't have a purely build on here. Um, but the point of this is, is that when you're looking at like a Sky Striker deck, you have a lot of flex spots. Purely has a lot of flex spots because they basically play the same 18 purely cards. And then you have like the rest of the deck to be flex spots of whatever you want, whether it's, you know, going second cards like Board Breakers, like Lightning Storm or Ash Blossom, Desires, Imperms, like talents you have these options available to you whereas something in like even a, say a wing dragon of raw deck like what flex spots do you have in this deck like seriously how many fucking flex spots do you have in this deck okay you can cut an immortal phoenix and a mound of the bound creator what two cards are you going to throw in that actually like makes this deck on a much better level to where it's at least rogue like playing three ash like okay that's fine but you're in a 40 card deck like you're, uh, what are the odds of you seeing your one of three hand traps that are all the same for one interruption on the opponent's turn a 40 card deck like that's got to be in like the teens percentage like you're not hitting 20 plus percent on seeing this and like 
ideally you want to play more than just three hand traps. Like to me, it just seems pointless just to play three. You know, you want to play like, I would say at least nine or even 10 if you can push it. So like you would want to throw in three droll and three imperm to like make this competitively viable. So like at that point, you got to take out another six cards, but what six cards are you taking out to where your wing dragon of raw deck can still function as a raw deck? Like maybe take out two sphere modes, but even then like these are board breakers. So then you start thinking, okay, well then let's go down the board breaker route let's cut the ashes for like evenly matches let's start doing things like that but then you also run into the issue of what board breakers can you throw in to where then you're not conflicting <laughs> with the god card cards that you have to play to actually make this piece of crap work like if you start clearing the board with sphere mode okay congratulations you played yourself now you can't use your fucking soul crossing although you probably weren't going to be able to use it anyway because the opponent had negate stuff that you had to clear with sphere mode so all of that to say i want to end on a talking about slifer real quick because everything culminates into also talking about uh slifer the same goes for slifer you know outside of the revived sky god what cards do slifer decks have going for them like outside of soul crossing you can use this in any god card deck outside of revived sky god what does slifer have going for it oh well i'm gonna play a numeron engine avery okay cool how does it feel to get ash blossom on the network how does it feel to get omni negated on like anything ever like an ash blossom farts on your deck and this deck dies like and i get that there are meant to be casual decks in Yu-Gi-Oh, but at the same time why can't they, especially the god cards that are mascots in of themselves in this game, have better support than just like, oh, if Soul Crossing gets negated, you die. Or like, oh, okay, cool. Both of us can draw until we have six cards in our hand. It's Card of Sanctity. Like, this is a good start. Revive Sky God and Soul Crossing are good starting points. But like, why can't we have something that just ties everything together and make them so much better? Guys, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video.